treat you good Heaven is right here between us And highways from here to forever It's a notion until I'm set loose tonight Streets that I've never walked before Signs that I've never seen before Sounds that I've never heard before What is the price I would pay? Jared here, rockerazzi.com and 987fm.com We've got two of the members of Brad with us, Sean and Stone, of course. Thanks for taking time out, appreciate it. Right. You guys sounded good, it was, it was freezing out there. Yeah, a little yeah. cold, a little yeah. cold. Yep. And you guys just compared to Seattle, but say, we just should got be easy. here like six hours ago, so okay. it's much colder at home. But and you guys just came from Kimmel, right? Yep, we just right. did that. Do you guys enjoy the the kind of live TV gig? Is that as weird as it may seem to be? I've only done it twice, so, or something, but it was all right. Uh, uh, we we had fun playing. If it's fun and you play well, it's the greatest thing you've ever done. And if you mm -hmm. suck on TV, you're just like God. <laughs> so don't ever do that again. Right, so tonight was good. We felt pretty good about it. So and this is the new record. Fans, Rock Rotsy fans, best friends, awesome, totally killer. Um, no, I know the writing process for this was a, a little bit strange, and the and it took quite a while for this thing to finally come out. And our fans are kind of um, intrigued about. What was the process like, and why did it take so long, and why did you decide to do it now? Well, I think the, the record was actually recorded like a regular record in three weeks or okay. whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And then we sat on it for a long time, and then mixed it, and did some fixes and stuff. But So we kind of, we made the record and then kind of lost steam. We just mm -hmm. kind of weren't really hanging out with each other that much. We didn't see each other, and we're sort of, you know, everyone was doing their own thing. And then we sort of, you know, as things go you come back around to things and go wow this is a cool record and then Regan and I kind of started to get excited about it again and after a couple of years and we kind of went back in and did some mixes and a few little overdubs and kind of started to piece it together a little bit more and then another four years went by and then um, we finally got this opportunity to put it out through Monkey Wrench and right. so it's out now and it's it's really exciting now we're learning songs that we wrote a while ago a long time ago and they're kind of coming to life for us so and but we've already started working on a new record, so it's uh, we're we're we've been a band now for almost twenty years, and we're not we're going to be a band until we're dead. I hope but, you know that would be my dream. So um, we're going to keep making records and um, keep looking for opportunities to kind of get out get our music out there, and um, you know it won't be so long. The next one. Take me back to where you belong, like you're already there. Uh -huh. So bless me, Father, as I begin to go around this course again. It's been a long one, but I'll survive. And this time I'll try not to hide. If you weren't playing Music Stone, what do you think you'd be doing? Uh, I'd probably be a lawyer. Really? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You I think you'd be a good lawyer? I don't know. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I already am a lawyer. I just don't have a license. Okay. It's a law. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of lawyer is that? I'm I'm confused. I don't know. You know, <laughs> you're, you're, lawyers are just in the mix. You know, it's right. like I'm in the mix. Um, so First record that you ever purchased with your own money. Uh, Elton John's greatest hits. Maybe uh, Simon and Garfunkel's greatest hits. Oh, cool. I think that was my own money. Could have got that bought in for me by an ant. <laughs> well, I bought it. I remember pulling it out of the bin and taking it up to the thing. I was nine. Uh -huh. So, um, was there a concert um, in your adolescence that kind of stands out amongst others that was like, shit? This is the reason why I, I play rock and roll today is because I saw this particular band or this particular concert. No, I didn't see any concerts till I was older. Really? Yeah. Okay. I lived in Bakersfield. And I didn't really have. Too many We're going to get lots of emails from Bakersfield now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, Ozzy, you know, Sabbath played there. Sure. But I was, my parents wouldn't let me go to, like, Sabbath or uh, April Wine or uh -huh. anything. Uh -huh. Blackfoot would come play. That's right. Yeah, cool. But everyone would play in L.A. or Fresno. Mm -hmm. So I didn't go to a real concert till I was eight, 19 or 20. Did you know that about him? Um, I didn't know that. I thought you maybe you had seen some shows before. Leif Garrett. Yeah. 
Wow. You How know. was his band? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shredding. Just I won tickets for my paper route, and so me and my friend just went. And How was it? It was just funny. He came out, he slipped, he fell, and actually earlier in the day, he did a record si signing at our local record store uh -huh. down the street, in the you know whatever, and uh, his limo ran over a little girl's leg, <laughs> and we were kids on our motocross bikes just laughing. He was Leif Garrett, and he was yeah. you know, he was Leif Garrett. Right. He was. That was. I don't want to. Call him a clown, but shit. <laughs> he's in the Where Are They Now files now. He's on VH1, Where Are They Now? Yeah. He's around. Like, yeah. yeah. Do you remember it? Was there a concert for you? Um, I, would say, I would say Tales of Terror, which was like a kind of a semi punk rock band, but they kind of had a lot of rock influence from San Francisco. They played in Seattle, it was probably like 86, where they were, I was seeing like a punk rock band with punk rock energy, but they also like had all this like. They were like playing halftime and rock and roll, and it was just, you know, that was a really important show for me to see. And then I would say um, Van Halen Diver Down tour, which wasn't really my adolescence, but it was when I finally went and saw Van Halen live, and I got to see the spectacle yeah, that was Van yeah, Halen. I'd yeah. never seen it before, and I liked them, but I was never like, wow, this is the greatest band of all times. And then I saw them, I went, wow, this yeah. is the greatest band of all times. Right Joy, comedy, yeah. funky, mm -hmm. heavy. You know, they just had it everything. Right, it was right. a circus. Right. And I salute Van Halen to right this on. day. But Michael Anthony needs to be back in the band. So okay. I'm just going to say it out. Also, next time I see him. All right. Hey, listen, thanks so much, Brad. Killer to meet you guys, and we enjoy the shows. All right, <coughs> grab the record. It's awesome. Like I don't even care. The times they are changing for the world today. As if nobody's there. So bless me, Father, as I begin to go around this course again. It's been a... Well, I'll treat you good!